What lies beneath 2000 movie review? Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little movie review on a movie called What Lies Beneath from the year of 2000. Now, What Lies Beneath, it's kind of like this somewhat mature 90s Harrison Ford movie mixed with a paranormal type movie. Now, it has a very Harrison Ford 90s vibe, as I was just saying. I don't know if you guys have seen like Air Force One, Patriot Games, um, The Fugitive, Clear and Present Danger. So it has that somewhat mature Harrison Ford type vibe, but then it's also kind of like a kind of like a paranormal type movie, which those usually don't vibe because because Harrison Ford in the 90s has, it's more of like a mature kind of audience and paranormal is kind of more of a young kind of audience. I think Michelle Pfeiffer is her name. I think she's in this as well. She's actually a very, very good actress and they have really, really good back and forth. But anyways, as far as spoilers, there's like a big kind of twist or reveal near the end and I'm not going to, I can actually describe this movie enough without giving away that spoiler. So this is kind of technically going to be spoiler free but I'm gonna give a little bit um, of hooks in the plot but I probably won't say anything that happened past maybe 30 40 minutes and this is a two hour and 10 minute movie so you know you got a lot past that 40 minutes so the basic synopsis is you have Michelle Pfeiffer Harrison Ford they have a kid their kids going off to college. I think like a year or two ago in the movie, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer got in some sort of accident. They hint that Harrison Ford's kind of treating her a little bit different after the accident. You kind of don't know exactly what happened. And Michelle Pfeiffer's kind of doing stuff around the house and she's starting to see paranormal stuff. So that's kind of like the basic synopsis, but this movie does go way beyond this. It goes way further and, and it twists back and forth and back and forth, which I do like. Some people were able to see it from far away, but I watched this not tr like trying to figure it out and just kind of going along with it and I really, really enjoyed this journey. This was definitely one of the best movies I've seen recently. I actually really like this movie, to be honest. So. so anyways, guys, let's jump into the pros that I have with this movie. The pros was that I felt like it was pretty unique. The only kind of paranormal movie that this reminds me of is something like Stir Up Echoes. And if you've ever seen Stir Up Echoes, the way that the ghost is and kind of the ghost motives are very, very similar to this movie. Besides that, it's it's just very unique. There is some tropes in this movie that is kind of like basic and simple, but in my opinion, I thought I just felt like it was very unique. Um, I was kept like guessing like wh what's this movie going to be you know like, wh where is it going is there a bad person is there a ghost like I just kept like not really knowing exactly where it's going and it's kind of like a slow burn I'm not gonna lie in my opinion it kept it keeps you guessing because things just kind of keep like creeping and like I just never was able to like figure out a hundred percent like oh this is where we're going you know it was kind of like everything was always up in the air which I really appreciated um, this movie is very 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 suspenseful now some of the suspense scenes are a little bit basic they're like very classic like oh we're not gonna do this type of suspense scene are we but it's weird it doesn't really bother me because I think it's just very well done um, it has full-on scenes of just like oh my gosh nail-biting suspense and like um, the most famous one is when she's in this uh, this bath and I'm not gonna reveal too many details but she's kind of like half unconscious and she's like the water's like rising above to where she can't breathe and she's like trying to like fidget about a minute or two of like you almost can't breathe you know what I mean so it has very very good intense scenes it has some pretty intense kind of like jump scares now I guess I guess they are a little bit cheap jump scares but there's not too many of them you know but it'll just kind of be going on like oh this is a classic Harrison Ford movie and then all of a sudden dink like some crazy thing just starts happening out of nowhere and it's like wow kind of caught me off guard, but I felt like the um, jump scares, although they were a little bit cheap at times, they weren't overdone and it didn't bother me and I, I liked the pacing of it for sure. I really liked the acting between Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. I think they both several times throughout this movie really, really impressed me you know, about the different roles that they take on because Michelle Pfeiffer, like sometimes she gets like half possessed at times. This isn't really giving anything away about the movie, but she gets kind of half possessed at times. So she has to act like somebody else. And then there's um, some things that happen with Harrison Ford where he has to act much differently than he does in the beginning. And I was really impressed about how much energy and emotion I felt watching him act. He really put a lot into it and I really appreciate it. And to be honest, guys, this is like probably my favorite nineties. I know it's not nineties, technically because it was in 2000 but it feels like those 90s Harrison Ford movies 
And this is probably my favorite 90s Harrison Ford movie besides The Fugitive. The Fugitive probably out edge number one barely. But I literally, if I had to watch a 90s style Harrison Ford movie, I would definitely watch this one. It's very, very entertaining. And I think their acting was just fantastic. Really intense, kept you guessing the whole time. It was a little bit of a slow burn, but enough things would change and kind of keep you guessing. And there were so many times where there was a back and forth. You're like, is this the bad thing or is it okay, it's not? Oh, is this the, is this the bad thing or is it not? Is this okay, you know? And it really was like a believable back and forth. And then my brain's just trying to easily figure out the ending and it really wasn't. I think if you like crazy about finding out the ending or overthinking things, maybe it'll you'll think of it, you know, but maybe it'll come to you a little bit easier if you're overthinking the movie. But to me, I really enjoyed every little bump on the road of this movie and it just went back and forth so many times and I really enjoyed it. So if I were to jump into the cons that I had with this movie, it was a bit long. Now, as I was saying earlier, it's a little bit of a slow burn. Slow burns, I can get into them if they're the right kind of slow burn for me. I did enjoy this one. And in my opinion, enough does change throughout the movie to where although it is slow, you know, you're, you're constantly moving, things are changing, suspects are appearing or they're disappearing, you know, things like that. The only part of this movie that I can think of that you could just completely remove or you could maybe cut down to help with the time is the original red herring of their neighbor. So like when they're first starting the movie, I don't think this is spoilers because this happens maybe 30 to 40 minutes in the movie. You hear a bunch of weird stuff going on with their neighbors. Sometimes they seem like they're having a lot of fun. Sometimes it seems like they're arguing and Michelle Pfeiffer is just almost determined that the ghost has something to do with the neighbor. She almost thinks that the neighbor killed um, his wife, things like that. They kind of come to a point where they rule out the neighbor and he's just gone. So we ended up spending maybe 20, 30 minutes on this neighbor and it almost seems like the ghost has something to do with the neighbor or the neighbor is fishy. Um, he gets ruled out and he's just gone, has nothing else to do with the movie. So that was the only thing that I think could be cut to help the time. But even though it was a long movie, I, I really enjoyed it because it did have so many back and forth things and most of the stuff they did in this movie, I'm glad that they kept it in. And then really the only other con is how far-fetched the ghost intervening is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm gonna try not to give away any spoilers, but the ghost is trying to like reveal things to Michelle Pfeiffer. And the ghost is doing these like one in a million things that just points her in the right direction. It was too far fetched. The ghost, it was like a ghost would do this thing and a one in a million chance that that would reveal something and it gets revealed. You know what I mean? So I feel like that was a little bit far fetched. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much the only two things. It was a little bit long. And is this really a bad thing? Because I like mature Harrison Ford movies and I like haunted movies, but I feel like it could never be the best movie ever made with those two together. Although I love it, I like it. I'm just like Harrison Ford, the way he's such a good actor and the, the maturity of him and Michelle Pfeiffer combined with just this kind of like somewhat youthy horror. Like I love it, I like it, but I just something about that holds it from being like the biggest blockbuster ever, you know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's really the only cons I could think about this movie. I really enjoyed it. And I just watched the movie called The Uninvited and The Uninvited absolutely blew me away. And I might edge The Uninvited over this one barely by a hair, just because The Uninvited was really, really short and it was, you know, had no fat to it. And to be honest, guys, this would probably go neck and neck because I almost think the acting in this movie is far superior and I just really, really enjoyed it. If you haven't seen this movie, 100%, I recommend checking it out. It was totally worth, well worth the watch to me. And if I was even gonna say buy, try, or pass, I would say probably own this one. I literally think it's that good. If I was gonna rate it, I'd rate it between an eight to an 8.5 out of 10. So anyways, guys, have you seen this movie? I'd be very interested to see down below. It's just kind of like a little bit buried. I don't think I've heard anybody talk about it ever. Real quick, how I discovered this movie, I meant to uh, put this in the beginning. A lot of times when I wanna watch a new movie, I'll go look up these lists online, like somebody will create like best mysteries or best suspense. 
And I think I Googled best mysteries and I found like a mystery and suspense list. I found this movie on the list and it wasn't rated that highly. I think it's rated like maybe like a 6.5, 6.7. So it's really not rated that high, but I looked at the recent, all the recent reviews of this movie and the lowest one was like a seven. You know what I mean? So I'm like, wow, people are picky and people are like, you know, have problems with absolutely everything. So to see all the ratings as like a seven, eight, nine, all recently, it was like, this movie must be pretty good and it was. So I might have to <laughs> deploy that strategy more looking at the recent reviews. So let me know what you think of What Lies Beneath. I totally think you should check it out. I highly recommend it. Um, anyways, guys, we're on the route to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.